Hey everyone, my name is Taylor Smith, aka The Career Coach, and today I'm talking about what is a resume and how to get started creating one. So whether you're creating your very first resume or maybe it's been a while and you honestly just need a resume makeover. Whichever the case, this video is dedicated to you, so keep on watching. But again, I do wanna highlight that I am a career coach and I help college students and professionals get noticed by recruiters, stand out as a top candidate, and get offers for paid internships and full-time opportunities. If any of that resonates, with you then you're in the correct place so let's go ahead and get started with our video let's kick things off with the definition of a resume so a resume is basically a summary of your experience your education and some of your qualifications that you would all put together for some type of application so whether this is for some kind of job opportunity this is for a scholarship or maybe even a college application the list really goes on and on but a resume is usually about one to two pages max in length in comparison Resumes are often compared to CVs, which is a curriculum vitae, and this is a long history of all of your academic accolades and certifications. And so this is no limitation as far as the length because it can go as detailed and as long as possible of all the different things that you've done. How to get started with your resume? Let's kick things off by picking a template. So my preferences here are to use the different templates available in Microsoft Word, or you can also use Google Docs if you have a free Google, Google account, which would be pretty easy. You can also use different apps like Canva or even Adobe Acrobat where they have different templates there, but they may not be as user friendly as the first two, so this use this to your discretion. You can also use different websites like Indeed or LinkedIn, which will actually do some kind of resume builder for you. So all you have to do is enter your information and they will actually format and create the resume for you. However, I don't recommend you do this. Um, I think it's much better if you do it yourself or you get some kind of resume writer to help you because it's just going to be a lot cleaner on the different formats and the information that you put inside the resume. And then lastly, you can also utilize different websites like Etsy, et cetera, that may sell their own templates online that you can actually purchase and you can use. You don't really need to break the bank for this um, specific template, so the free versions online are perfectly okay. Um, what my piece of advice here is to really just keep your template very basic and simple. You don't need anything super flashy. You don't need all the different charts and graphs and different things like that on your resume the more simple the more basic honestly the better because the recruiter is only going to be looking at this for a few minutes and they need to really easily be able to read skim and digest all the information on your resume because the average recruiter only looks at your resume for about five to six seconds so you want to make sure you get their attention in the right way with the information that you bring across, not necessarily based off of how it looks and how pretty it is. So stick to neutral colors, stick to basic and simple formats and tables, and then also stick to very simple fonts. So this is more like the sans serif styles. This is like Times New Roman, Arial, Cambria, Calibri, Helvetica, Vernanda, and Georgia fonts, but it's not limited to these. After you pick a template, you wanna start adding in your personal information on your resume. So this is the very first section on your actual resume, which is including some of your contact information. And this is basically, in case you were to progress to next steps, then you wanna be able to have a contact number, email address, etc., that the person can reach out to you afterwards to progress forward and then potentially get an offer at the end but in this section you want to make sure that you're including your name after your name which is the biggest and boldest on your resume you also want to make sure that you have your email address on there so when you add this email address make sure that is a professional one if you want to learn more about this and some of the major mistakes to avoid when creating your resume make sure you watch this video here where i talk about some of the top 10 resume mistakes i see people making and one of those on that list is having an unprofessional email address after that, you wanna make sure that you add your phone number, which is one that is actually reachable and is a good valid one for them to use. And then lastly, you wanna add your address. So if you don't wanna actually add your street number and all of that on there, that's perfectly okay. You can just put your city, state, and your zip code on there and just call it a day. And the main reason you wanna have this on your resume is so that if there is any relocation required, because you would have to move to a different city or a different state or maybe even country for this specific position. They know where you're currently located in case they have to do that and it's already anticipated up front. 
In addition to all of this in this section, you can also include a little snippet or one liner that says that you are a US citizen and do not require sponsorship. If there's any question or doubt that your name um, may potentially give somebody when they read your resume. So that way, um, there's um, a lot less bias. Um, there's a little bit more comfortability, especially for those companies that may have a specific requirement where they do not um, allow sponsorship for non-US citizens. So you can make sure that you add that to your resume if you think there's any doubt in your mind and you would just feel more comfortable adding it here on this section. Next, you wanna draft and start listing the different sections you want to include on your resume. And within each section, you also want to start creating a list underneath that of the different experiences or things you want to list under each. So this list may include your objective, education, professional experience, any leadership skills, and technical skills, plus so many, so many more. If you wanna learn more about different sections you can include in your resume, especially if you're just starting out and you may not have a lot of experience, if any, and you wanna make sure that you're including important information to make you stand out, make sure you stay tuned and check out next week's video where I'm gonna be talking about the different sections you can include in your resume. So make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss next week's video. In the meantime, if you wanna figure out what are some things that you can start doing now, because maybe you're a college student and you're very early in your college career, or maybe you're just starting out your career and you're still trying to figure out different things to add onto your resume to make you seem very versatile and a great asset, you can check out this video I have already that talks about the 10 ways that you can start building your resume now by getting active and doing different things within your community and different organizations to make you stand out and be a great asset that any candidate, um, any company would want to hire as a candidate. After you map out the different sections on your resume, you want to start mapping out and adding these different bullet point descriptions. So you want to avoid doing these different types of paragraphs or summaries that people have done in the past because this is an outdated practice. Like I mentioned before, the average recruiter only looks at your resume for about five to six seconds at initial glance. And if they're impressed, then they'll continue to look at it for a few more minutes. So you wanna make sure that you're catching the recruiter's attention from the very beginning by including this most important and pertinent information in a way that's easy for them to skim through and digest. And bullet points are a lot easier to skim through than bulky paragraphs, so please keep this in mind. But in addition to this, with these paragraphs, you wanna make sure that you're talking about not only what you did but also highlighting some of your major accomplishments and also including as many keywords buzzwords strong action verbs and also as many metrics and numbers as possible to make sure that you stand out and grab the recruiters attention make sure you guys stay tuned and hit that notification bell if you haven't already so that in two weeks you are notified when I am posting my new video where I'm going to talk about smart description descriptions and how to really incorporate all of this into your bullet point descriptions to make you stand out and get noticed by recruiters. So if you haven't already, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss that video. I know this is probably one of the trickiest parts to incorporate on your resume, so if you do need help, make sure that you guys check out my website, which I'll put in the description box below, so that you can reach out to me if you need any resume help as far as your resume makeover, where I would do your entire resume for you from start to finish, as far as all the formatting, all the bullet point descriptions, etc. Whether you already have a resume to work off of or you don't have one at all, I got you. We'll figure this out. So let's talk about some general resume tips or some some resume 101 to kick things off I want to mention that your resume should really only be about one page two pages max but even with that said I only recommend your resume being two pages if you have over 10 years experience or if you're on some kind of executive level so with that said if you feel like your resume is tight and you just have way too much information on there and you can't consolidate it down to one page, then you probably need to remove some of that information on there that may not be as relevant for anymore or that may not be as critical as some of the other information that you need to include on your resume instead. So you need to just consolidate your resume down to the most pertinent and relevant information depending on where you are in your specific time in life and the specific position that you are applying for. But with that said, there are some little tips and tricks you can do to make sure that you utilize and maximize the space you have on there. So for example, you can decrease your margins and do other little 
tweak, tweaks and tricks like that in order to expand the amount of space that you have on your resume. So in three weeks, I'm actually gonna be posting a video where I'm going to tell you more about these different formatting tips and tricks so that you can utilize this space and also make your resume still stay pretty and visually appealing while being sleek and clean. So make sure that you guys hit the notification bell so that you guys are alerted when that video comes out and you get all the tips and tricks you need. So tip number two for the resume 101 is to avoid any jargon. And jargon is basically any um, specific terms or acronyms that only a specific group of people are familiar with but not everyone so with that said you want to try to dumb things down as much as possible so that anybody who's reading your resume can understand what it is that you're talking about because remember not only the subject matter experts are going to be looking at your resume but also a lot of recruiters and HR persons are going to be looking at it so you want to make sure that it's very clear and they can understand what it is that you've done you also want to try to avoid any acronym so that's whether you are spelling it out all the way or maybe you're just explaining explaining it in a different way so that it's very clear and it makes sense to people. Tip number three is to avoid any fluff. So fluff is basically anything that is non-value added. This is adding something to your resume that you think would make you look good but actually isn't really making it or breaking it for you. So this could be examples like bar graphs, any soft skills sections, or different things that people may already expect you to already have, know, or possess that you're adding onto your resume just to take up space, but it's really not adding any clear value to you. If you have anything like that, just go ahead and remove it from your resume because it's taking up valuable real estate you could instead be using for something else that's going to make you stand out and be a lot more impressive. Already up next, you wanna make sure there's room for white space on your resume. What I mean by this is you don't wanna cram everything on your resume so that you can make everything fit and that it's just so visually unappealing your brain can't even process or know where to start. So you wanna make sure that you're including white space in between different sections and areas within your resume, which I talk about a little bit more in the formatting video so that it's visually appealing and it's easier for the brain to process and look at and digest all the different information on it. In addition to that, you don't need to include every single thing on your resume. So this means that you wanna leave some of this to talk about during the interview. So you don't have to list out every single duty that you've done in every single position or every single detail down to the infinite last thing because sometimes you're going to be able to elaborate and talk about this a lot more within the interview so with that said you want to just keep it high level and make it clear enough so that people get the main gist and understand some of the key concepts and things that you've done in addition to that you want to make sure that you don't add anything to your resume you don't feel comfortable talking about so this kind of goes hand in hand you don't need to list every single thing on your resume that you've ever done because some of that stuff really doesn't make or break you kind of like we talked about with the fluff things so examples of this could be like being some kind of member of an organization where you didn't have a leadership role you didn't do any volunteering with them basically all you did was attended meetings or this could also be little different things that you have on your resume maybe some technical skills like for instance i had to take a c plus plus class um, as an engineering student but if i were asked a c plus plus question during an interview i probably wouldn't do that well so basically anything you have on your resume is game for some kind of interview question so if you don't feel comfortable talking about it or if you don't want someone to ask you more questions about it then that should probably be a rule of thumb to just go ahead and remove it from your resume up next is you need to proofread your resume before you submit it or print out a whole bunch of copies before going to some type of career fair so these are three things i recommend you doing one is stepping away from your resume so whether that's going to go eat dinner whether this is to go take a walk or maybe even go to sleep and wake up the next day before you review it and look for any errors after the fact you want to make sure that you always print out a copy of your resume when you look at it and also read it out loud by doing these three different things you'll be able to catch a lot more errors and be able to go back and make the modifications on your computer before you go print out multiple other copies or attach it and submit it within some kind of application Next, when you save your resume, you wanna make sure you save this as your first name, last name, and resume. And the reason for this is more so like as a courtesy. So the different recruiters, they may have several different candidates that are applying, and they may need to save all of these to a hard drive or some kind of folder. And if they have one that just says resume, or resume 2022 they have no idea whose resume that is and that creates nuances because now they have to go back and figure it out and resave it and all that saves those people some headaches um or 
maybe your application being completely obsolete because no one wants to take the time to do that and make sure that you write your name on your um, resume title so it's again first name last name and resume if you want to add something after the fact like i often like to do to know the differences between the different types of resume versions i might have you can write after the fact and write like retail resume 2022 or even something like fall engineering resume um 2022 so that you know the differences between each also when you um save your resume you want to make sure it's a pdf copy before you attach it or email it to anybody about some kind of specific position opportunity and this is because it keeps the integrity and the formatting of your resume the same because the depending on the different um, device you use let's say for example if i open microsoft word on my phone versus my computer the formatting is going to be all types of jacks up on my phone and very different so this doesn't mess things up and make it look all weird and funny um so by doing this is going to keep the integrity intact or for example if you did yours in google docs but i only have microsoft word on my computer and i look at it it's going to mess up the formatting so the best thing is to save it or to print it um, into some kind of PDF copy before you attach it online. And lastly, you want to make sure that you're practicing your resume, right? Because this is the foundation of your application process going forward. So people are going to ask you about all the experiences on your resume. They're going to ask you to tell you, them a little bit about yourself. And all of this is going to be based off of the information you have on your resume. So you want to make sure that you know your resume like the back of your hand and you study it and you practice it because this is the cheat sheet to almost everything else within the application process. All right, y'all. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked it and you learned something new, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn more about resumes, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you can check out all those videos I already have on my page and are coming soon. And if you want to learn more about different career readiness things or different career paths related to engineering supply chain, make sure you check out those videos on my channel as well. If you want to stay connected with me, I'll put my social media and website, all that information in the description box below. But until until then guys, I will talk to you soon and happy job hunting.